the reality, something which every entrepreneur, every business decision maker needs to have a good grasp on. However, in the modern technology world, reality is indeed getting defined and redefined every single day. We hear words like virtual reality, augmented reality, and in comes the new concept of metaverse, open metaverse, and so many different terms. What exactly is all this about? Have you ever seen some individuals having a phone and chasing some random virtual object which you can't see but they see through the phone? Have you ever seen individuals wearing funny glasses and enjoying themselves in a totally different world out there? Well, it's not just science fiction anymore. This is the reality of augmented reality, virtual reality and mixed reality technologies we are seeing in the world today. Welcome to your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. This is Biznomics, where we deliver to you the latest in the business and economic landscape of Sri Lanka and the world. Today, as I mentioned in my introduction, our focus is on these billion dollar opportunities available with regard to these new realities. And joining me for this very interesting discussion is none other than Mr. Samir Nilupul, who is the CEO of Ogmo, a company specializing in building the infrastructure for the open metaverse. Samira, absolute pleasure to have you and welcome to Biznomics. Thank you very much, Sandhu. It's a, like, I'm glad to be here. Samira, now, we hear these words being used very often and you're a tech expert on this front, no mm. two doubts. What exactly, but let's define this in a layman's term first. What exactly is virtual reality, augmented reality and mixed reality? Confusing terms sometimes, I'm sure you will demystify and share the reality with us. Over to you to share your thoughts. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks Tarindu. So augmented reality, the virtu I'll start with the virtual reality. Virtual reality is like superimposing yourself into a completely virtual world. Like uh, that's what you, uh, like I'm pretty sure like the entire audience have seen the virtual reality headsets. So once you wear that virtual reality headset, you are completely in a, like a virtual world. Different world out there. Yeah, different world. But when it comes to augmented reality, you augment your real world with virtual objects. For example, like as you mentioned, the Pokemon Go game. So you take a look at your mobile phone. So you see the superimposed uh, virtual creatures in your real world. So that's the main difference between the uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. And the mixed reality is like a funny term people use for like, uh, combined like yeah, combined thing. So just to make uh, things easier to understand for our audience as well, mm -hmm. you and I right now, this is our reality. Yeah, exactly. I'm wearing a blue jacket, you're wearing a nice maroon mm -hmm. t-shirt. Now, if we both were wearing something like a headset and mm -hmm. let's say automatically you and I are next to the beautiful uh, Ravana Allah in Allah yeah. and we could kind of see that uh, it's right behind us, it's right behind you, it's right behind me. It's a, it's a separate world which we've created through that technology, which only you and I see, uh, see, we'll see through that device that we are wearing. Exactly. And at the same time, if let's say for example, if I have a phone and if I point the phone at this table and, it's, mm -hmm. and the phone has a software that says this is a, a table, it's mm -hmm. made out of this material. That is, on top of this reality, I am putting a digital layer. Exactly. Am I, have I got your concept right? Yeah, you are absolutely correct. So, this has some tremendous potential, isn't it? Because, I mean, for example, if you look at tourists, if tourists are able to point a phone at Sigiri and the mm -hmm. whole story and the history of Sigiri comes on that particular phone app, that, is a, that could be a case of augmented reality and that could be very beneficial for most of the tourists who come to this country. And... Now you've got me thinking, a doctor can use a separate, like a glass, look at a patient and what if they have a system that analyzes and shows some of the issues with that patient then and there to the doctor, that could also be sometimes a life-saving thing. Am I correct? Yeah, for example, I, I would give you the absolute correct, like, correct, correct example there. For example, I think uh, the, 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 the person who is in the ambulance, they can directly connect with the doctor instantly, like let's say in an emergency. We are, patient that, we are, we are taking the patient to the uh, hospital. hospital now. Okay, yeah. got it. So like through that, uh, like the, if, imagine like uh, the, 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 the person who is in the ambulance, the nurse, maybe the nurse, like uh, he can, like the, the person can connect to the uh, doctor. Hos hospital. Yeah, yeah, the, hospital, the doctor. yeah uh, in real time. 
and like uh, like they can instruct the uh, like the, the 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 doctor can instruct the nurse. the nurse on like what to do where to do like all this, that I, I i'm not sure like that's the best example but, yeah, but let, it's let's, a possibility yeah it's a possibility it's a possibility that these reality technologies are bringing to us sounds fascinating now samira you know you're in the show businomics and here mm. business matters when it comes to business no matter how fancy or good a technology may be the numbers matter yeah. so <laughs> how big are the numbers right now and what kind of a growth rate are we looking at here so so this entire uh, ar and vr boom started after 2015 any reason uh that's the f- main reason was facebook buying this oculus company and uh, like uh, like they started like getting the virtual reality to the mainstream then uh, like companies like htc and all the all the uh, other big tech giants started getting into uh, virtual reality then microsoft ta- started uh, getting into mixed reality through their uh, like via ar head- headsets yes and then and now they've integrated a lot of that into some of their gaming consoles as well isn't yeah, it yeah exactly and then uh, <clears throat> when it comes to the uh, the scale i would say like then uh, apple and uh, google they introduced their own versions of augmented reality tools like for like earlier in the 2016 and 17 the mobile phones like the and both all the android phones the and the apple phones they did not have the capability to run either augmented reality or virtual reality currently like uh, your android phone like uh, or the iphone that you own they have the inbuilt capabilities to run augmented reality in your phone without you even knowing it so oh, wow. imagine there are like <clears throat> there are billions of devices at the moment in the world uh, with native ar and vr support so the so, so processing these uh, different exactly. dimensions and all it's just a natural part of the whole exactly. uh, operation yeah, there yeah yeah great now Let's get into the applications a little bit now because mm-hmm. because I know you're someone who's been heavily involved in developing solutions using VR, AR, and all these concepts. Samir, now beyond the research work and beyond these nice to hear concepts, wh- where do we see practical applications of these technologies? Uh, I would say first thing is gaming and entertainment. So that's the industry uh, where this. Uh, technology is going to impact uh, in the beginning but then uh, in the long run uh, your day to day business or like uh, like the online shopping is going to uh, be like revolutionized by these kind of technologies so when you are looking at uh, bringing in uh, ar and vr uh, for any business or any organization uh, samira how, how do you how does one start bringing in these technologies into their business what should be the questions they should be asking uh first you should ask the question uh, of like uh, like uh, whether what 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 can i so- do like solve what's the pain point that i can solve for your customers for example i would say like uh, like let's uh, let's take a company like uh, ikea so uh, they, a furniture yeah company. furniture company so uh, like the fundamental question like um, like like fundamental uh, issue that uh, customers like customers face. face is that i'm i'm looking at this sofa inside the showroom it looks very nice there there but how would it look in my own home correct that's where the augmented reality comes in if your business is powered with augmented reality uh, like let's say like let's say you you go to the website you click on a button you get that sofa loaded onto your uh, mobile phone yes. and you can place it in your home and see how it looks exactly with the correct lighting conditions that technology is there most of the like the uh, that technology is then there it's a matter of uh, the adoption correct but in sri lanka do do we see a lot of organizations actually adopting vr and ar because i don't see that's mm. why i'm asking you you are someone in the forefront of this whole technology do you see sri lankan companies taking optimal advantage of this amazing technology uh there are few companies who has like started using augmented reality through our company and through our uh, other companies as well but it's very limited at the moment in sri at lanka at a very nascent initial yeah, stage yeah exactly uh, any any reason for this is it that we are usually behind the innovation cycle of most technologies is that the reason or are they not seeing the value of it or is it that 
our market is not yet ready for it. What's the problem? I would say our market is not yet ready for it. Even, even in the world scale also, we will see it will take around two to three years uh, more to like in order to this technology to become uh, mainstream. Mainstream. Yeah. Understood. And do you see due to the pandemic with mm -hmm. more people staying indoors and staying at home, have we seen a growth of the usage of this technology, especially through gaming and so on? What is your experience? Uh, I would say uh, like uh, that, that. That's like providing a very like even though like big tech is investing heavily into augmented reality and virtual reality in the global scale. From my experience, I haven't seen the uh, the, the 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 trend. Okay. At the moment. At the moment. But, but in the future, it could change. It could change. That's the the reason is. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would give you a nice example. So, for example, touch phones were there from 2000s, early 2000s. Like you know, like the touch phones, Correct, the, the yes. Nokia phone, they had the touch feature. Correct. It got mainstream after Apple introduced their own iPhone. That's that's that that the, the even though the technology was there, there were no use cases for people to switch from BlackBerry. Once they saw the what iPhone could do, like the App Store and all of those came, then right. and then only people started moving from uh, the the old Blackberries to new smartphones. So, but so it's an interesting case where most companies were approaching the market as individual companies and products, whereas some companies were coming into the market mm -hmm. not just alone but with an ecosystem, exactly. an ecosystem of the device the operating system and so many developers who develop for that platform am mm. i correct yeah so okay. that that that's what it takes so are you are you thinking that in the future there will be an ecosystem of ar and vr based solutions coming up uh, strongly in the market uh yeah i i, I would say first uh, the for for a regular user the the vr headset has to be something like the glass i am wearing so in order to in order to in order for that to happen the currently like the 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 technology like this size has to be shrunk down to a, this side and uh, the battery technology has to be developed in order to power like let's say like uh, like imagine like uh, like uh, fixing a like a battery here yeah. in, in in your regular glasses it has to be really miniature yeah so i would say like uh, there for the mass ad mass adoption of this technology it would take around uh, Eight to ten years more. Understood. The metaverse, something spoken of very frequently. What exactly is this about? Let's talk about that on the other side of this short break. This is Bisnomics. Welcome back to Bisnomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. I'm Thailand Omar Sekara. Our focus today is on the world of virtual reality, augmented reality, and especially some of the modern developments associated with these technologies, including the open metaverse. And we are in conversation with Samira Nilupul. Samira, now the metaverse, everyone is talking about it, especially in the tech sector yeah. and even in the business sector. And this all began with uh, Mark Zuckerberg coming and painting a very rosy picture of how the metaverse will look like, how you can be in the comfort of your home, but you can be in a totally different world out there. It looked like a world that anybody would love to jump in and be a part of. But I'm sure there is a lot more to it. There's a lot more that needs to be understood about it. But first things first, what is the metaverse? And this very interesting term which you use, open metaverse. What exactly is the open metaverse? Let's start from there. So, uh, like the metaverse is the next version of the internet. So, we had the internet. Now, internet is uh, moving towards the next phase, uh, which is metaverse powered by uh, like blockchain and uh, all those new emerging technologies. What exactly happens in this metaverse? So, uh, I would say the metaverse is like a collection of places where you can go as like, like let's say for example uh, we have been living in metaverse for like i would say decades for example when you take a look uh, like watch the tintin cartoon you are in the tintin metaverse so 
that's the the way you consume is the only difference yes. let's say when you play uh, some, something like temple run on mobile phone you are yeah, in that we are yeah. absorbed into that world yeah exactly Just that the game is happening in the games world and i am in this planet yeah. earth so it's like uh, the metaverse is already there like let's say if you play fortnite you are in the fortnite metaverse so but uh like this is like uh, the new fancy term which uh, mark zuckerberg uh, take yeah yeah and uh, so the f- the that's the difference like even though the facebook is renamed as meta that's totally different from the open metaverse okay. so uh, the facebook it's like the internet like when 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 we say internet there are so many companies internet companies correct when we say metaverse there should be thousands of different entities and the companies controlling the metaverse not a single company yeah. for example but is the metaverse like a virtual world uh yeah definitely the metaverse is going to be a fully virtual world like virtual places virtual meetings that you can attend virtual concerts uh, con- concerts that you can attend for example i would say uh recently there was a uh, like a Uh, do you, have you played Fortnite game? Yes. Yeah. Ariana Grande's virtual concert. Exactly. And Travis Scott's uh, virtual con- c- concert. So inside the gaming world's virtual world we had musicians coming and doing an actual concert. Exactly. But that metaverse was not consumed through a VR headset. Like people were using their gaming consoles or gaming PCs to consume those content. Right. So so if i am represented inside a metaverse because mm-hmm. we are trying to demystify and make it easy for everyone to understand here samira i can have like a character who looks like me um tall fair handsome <laughs> chubby as well a character like that at least the last one was true about me but the character like that representing me in the metaverse am i correct yeah exactly now 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 like let's say now you build a character uh, which you love Uh, on the metaverse now if your metaverse is owned by a single company they could take away your entire personal personality inside the metaverse and my entire identity yeah exactly because like let's say now you build an instagram profile your instagram profile and all the content that you upload to the instagram is owned by facebook incorporation correct, correct. but it's a, it's a part of the terms and exactly, conditions we exactly. just blindly agree to but when it comes to the open metaverse it's powered by blockchain that means the virtual character that you speak uh, like uh, like talked about it's an nft owned by you uh, a which is token. yeah non fungible token owned by you let's say like the content that you post or the games that you play or the uh, the, the the tokens like or let's say like you play a certain game in the metaverse and uh, like let's say you earn some kind of to- like stars by playing that game so that those tokens or the, those stars Has, like will be owned by you which will have an intrinsic value where you can trade uh, later on later on and cash out Understood. so so i can build i get your point no one company should be owning a virtual world that i am a part of i fully get that okay. but at the same time not only facebook isn't it there are so many other companies which are now uh, having these their own virtual worlds and mm-hmm. where people can go sometimes buy a plot of land create their own character walk about isn't it you can look around and every time you look around the character also mm. shows different pers- like different perceptions and different angles you can see so it's really a case of me being able to create another version of me yeah. in another world out there yeah. am i correct yeah you are absolutely correct so this is a very interesting concept now imagine if you and i are we are you saying samira that maybe in about another 10 years from mm-hmm. now on if i'm still doing this show and if you're still doing the same line of work and if we were to have a chat and if we yeah. were to talk about this whole um, the the virtual worlds and etc we might actually be doing the interview in a virtual world with our two virtual characters talking to each yeah. other but of course our brains but it's our two virtual characters that are talking to yeah. each other is that a possibility yeah that's a possibility for example now imagine uh like uh, you will not stay like this forever like you will get told but now imagine if you thank you for reminding yeah. me that <laughs> if you 3d scan yourself and build your metaverse character now and mint it as an nft which is owned by you so you will be in the metaverse forever just like this even though you forever get forever young yeah forever young and then like uh, your show this show could like, like you could be the host of the show just like this in like 100 years 
like that nft will have like a value the brand value that you built which you can pass to your generations like your son or like your daughter could like be the owner of the metaverse character you built so that's the beauty of the metaverse fantastic let's talk about the migration from the physical world to the metaverse because everyone is talking about it and we've seen some some of the global clothing brands like for example h&m is already mm -hmm. setting up operations in the metaverse as well because we, we very interestingly we see in the real world com some companies are number 1 and number 2 and the number 2 is on a race to be the number 1 in the metaverse because mm -hmm. that's yeah. the future and h&m had recently released a little glimpse of their virtual store inside the metaverse as well now my question to you is how do you see this migration happening from the physical world to the virtual world or the metaverse and what are the challenges that companies are facing when they are creating their virtual presence so so uh, so let's say uh, like let's take a look at a brand like uh, yeah so how would you like you make shoes so yeah. in the metaverse no one needs shoes Correct. like the, the, the shoes are virtual. Yeah. So how would you but transfer? But still my virtual character yeah. will need a pair of shoes. Pair of shoes. But how would you make sure the brand stays in the real world and the metaverse itself? Yes. So that's what all of these companies are doing at the moment. All of the, because they know that the metaverse is going to be huge in the future. Everyone is trying to like, uh, rec like establish their brand inside the metaverse in the digital world so that's why they issue like uh, the, the 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 they are branded nfts and so on and so correct, on correct so when they are trying to do that mm -hmm. what are the challenges they face is it the, is it the case of getting these 3d um, objects created um, what are the challenges they face because any businessman or any business owner who is watching this show who is thinking look i would like to go and set up myself in the metaverse but what are the challenges i should expect what are your thoughts on that? So, for example, like uh, as I said, uh, this is uh, like uh, the this is again we are at a point where uh, like in so think about it like uh, what web was in uh, 1990. In 1990s, like yeah. everyone was setting up websites. So uh, like then the the same like the business people like they were thinking like why would I need a website? Now who does not have a website? So in the future, in 20, 30 years time, like let's say if you are a brand, you would, you would need uh, like stores in the metaverse where people can visit. Like we would call them the virtual showroom. So all of your products, the, the products that you sell should be in real 3D inside your virtual showroom. And just to clarify once again, when you say companies will want to be in the metaverse, mm -hmm. it's not just one metaverse because there can be so many different, uh, exactly. like how we have different different countries because already Samira, when we search the web, mm -hmm. we see so many different metaverse platforms are there and they are their own separate virtual worlds. But what you are saying is, if my character is in the virtual world A and mm -hmm. if your character is having a house in virtual world B, I should still be able to visit the your house in your virtual world. That's what you mean by an open metaverse. Exactly, I exactly. So that's the whole point of our company Ogmo. That's like, uh, let's say, like we build the infrastructure for the open metaverse, so the like the individual metaverses can interact with each other. And they that come means together. like, yeah, that means like uh, the 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 3D object or something that you buy at the Facebook's metaverse could uh, should work in the, the uh, Fortnite, the, yeah, say. Fortnite. The yes. the something that you earn inside Fortnite should work in like the any Microsoft game. Correct, correct. So interesting concept and I think that's the right way to look at it as well because any technology should not be limited to the hands of a powerful few but rather be available and openly available for the for the benefit of mm. uh, the masses. Let's talk about the opportunities for Sri Lankan IT firms here. Now, what are the opportunities available for Sri Lankan IT businesses to build solutions for this metaverse and provide it to the market out there? In what areas, Samira, do you see the most opportunities right now available in the metaverse for developers? Uh, in terms of for the developers, uh, I would say like the metaverse is definitely going to be powered by the blockchain technology. So if you are a developer who is like who is planning to get into uh, this the blockchain development, that's the way. So all all the in, in 10 years time, all the like uh, old the web 2.0 
the developers like it's going to go away. So the with the metaverse, it's going the Web 3.0 is going to emerge. So now there's a huge opportunity. For example, like think about starting an internet company back in 2000s. There were so many opportunities, like companies like YouTube, Facebook, and all of these big companies, tech giants came from 2000 uh, in the early 2000s. Correct. Now it, there's an opportunity again to for the uh, the entrepreneurs or the developers to start building solutions for the metaverse, Web 3.0, and blockchain technology. So there are so many applications like uh, like it's like the wild west of internet again interesting uh, use of term the yeah, the wild west because that's a place with so much of confusion but it's also a lot of uh, opportunities available yeah exactly and how big is the opportunity for a new design market because now what used to be 2d designs now is all going towards a 3d design concept mm. now what do you think about that opportunity samir what are your thoughts yeah so definitely there is going to be a like a like huge opportunity for the designers like if you are a freelance designer uh, i would say like uh, if you know to design things in 3d there are like so many opportunities like going to like pop up in the future and the beauty is like uh, there are like uh, you can like sell your 3d designs inside these metaverse projects and you can earn with cryptocurrencies so that's the opportunity. So you don't have to wait like until uh, like uh, like if, uh, like the project is over. Or anything. Yeah, exactly. Like then like as Sri Lankans like there is like this uh, uh, confusion of like getting PayPal. We don't need PayPal anymore. So you can like if you are a designer, you can sell your 3D designs inside one of these metaverse projects, or you can uh, launch your own NFT collection if you are a artist and you can earn crypto. You are a young tech entrepreneur now. From the perspective of a young tech entrepreneur, what support do you think the government should be giving? Well, even recently, we saw some statements that 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 the government is aiming for the IT BPM industry to be close to three billion dollars and more. But words policies is one thing, Samir. I believe that results come through action. I don't know whether you'll agree with mm -hmm. me, but results come through action. What action do you want to see the government taking in order to make sure that our IT sector, especially the niche IT sector, it's like what you're into, the yeah. metaverse yeah. solutions, that those sectors grow and compete effectively in the global market. What are your thoughts? There are two key pain po points that we are having at the moment. That's like uh, in Sri Lankan market, uh, job market, we don't have enough 3D designers to hire and recruit. So, and the other, other problem is like uh, the, most of the Sri Lankan universities, the art I would say art faculties, they do not provide good 3D artists. So we would have to always outsource it to other countries. So that's one of the main pain points like when it comes to uh, like the 3D and metaverse solutions. The other thing is uh, like we don't have a cryptocurrency exchange at the moment in Sri Lanka to buy the crypto tokens so we can do crypto projects. Understood. So those but are the two key pain points. Do you think the government is promoting the local IT businesses enough or, do you, or what steps do you need in that front for the government to take? So Taking uh, the local businesses, local IT solution providers to the world. I, I would say, uh, I would say like uh, there should be a uh, like a, like a investor friendly ecosystem just like Singapore. So like where the big capital like VCs and the, the investors like yeah. let's say like now what happens is uh, like uh, if you are a Sri Lankan company, if you want to raise a big amount of funding, yes. either you have to incorporate in USA or Singapore or any other country. No one like uh, at the moment, no VC is going to put a huge amount of capital into a Sri Lankan company. Understood. What are the challenges when doing business in the metaverse? Let's talk about that on the other side of this short break. This is Bisnomics. Welcome back to Biznomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. We are in conversation with Samir Anilpul on the business potential of the metaverse and the mixed reality concepts as well. Samir, now when we talk about uh, the metaverse, I see that blockchain and cryptocurrency goes hand in hand with uh, the metaverse. What is the exact connection? Is the, 
is it that the cryptocurrencies are the currencies used in the metaverse or what is the whole concept there? So I would start uh, the, uh, that to answer that question with the early stages of the internet. In the internet, uh, the early stages of internet, it was like on read only. That means like you could consume the data on a certain website. One way. Yeah, one way, one way only one way. Then came the web 2.0, like the Facebook and the Twitter, those era came. Collaboration. Collaboration, like, and like you could speak to the other people in the internet, over the internet, and like you could send data to the internet. That's the web 2.0. Then came the web 3.0. That's the beauty of the uh, entire web 3.0. Like that means like you can now own things on the internet through blockchain technology. Like, for example, earlier, like, uh, if you want to uh, send uh, currency through the internet to a certain party, you'd have to go through certain banks, uh, like, certain, like, uh, credit card processors. And like extremely heavy fees. Extremely heavy fees. Correct. Now, on the internet, you can own your currencies as well as the digital assets. So, is this not what we call the internet of value? Exactly. Interesting thoughts. So... We see that um, the cryptocurrencies and the blockchain you being used to store the records mm. in this metaverse. Am I correct? Yeah. So that means like, as I explained earlier, so this NFTs is going to be the ownership of each and every asset you own in the metaverse. That's the, that's the word that we use as open metaverse because in the Facebook's metaverse, the It's stuff, limited to that. It's limited to that. But in the open metaverse, all the stuff that you own in the metaverse will be truly yours, where you can uh, interconnect with all the other metaverse projects and use it then and there. Or you can resell it to a certain person because you own that. Let's talk about the cost factor mm -hmm. because fancy technologies, nice to have, feels good, looks good, but not the easiest on the purse. Mm -hmm. Now, the cost of these equipment, Samira, what are the costs we are talking? Let's say if a company is looking at making a VR or a VR headset, what kind of costs are we looking at? And also, is it a fact, because we both know it's not cheap, and is that a reason for us to see that a lot of developing countries are still far behind in the whole VR and AR game? I would say uh, <clears throat> not even the developing countries. I would say the developed countries are also like uh, far behind when it comes to the virtual reality, but uh, when it comes to the uh, the metaverse, because like uh, like that's a concept that uh, that that's the application that can drive these hardware devices to the next level, because like with the boom of the metaverse, that's that's the reason that you would need uh, proper VR and AR headsets. Currently, let's say like if you take a look at uh, uh, Oculus VR headset, it could cost from uh, something like three hundred dollars to uh, five hundred, six hundred dollars. That's like cheaper than the iPhone that you buy. But I would say in uh, next 10 years time, uh, next uh, like eight to 10 years time, so like I would say the mobile phone will go away. Then it will go away. It will go away. Because like, uh, like I don't think that there will be iPhone like 25 or something like that. It, this iPhone, like the phone, mobile phone, the, the form, that's the the way you, that you consume information yes. will, like, the, that form will ch definitely change, uh, like, into wearables. Okay. Then, ne then the next... So, the, my phone might be embedded into my jacket. Exactly. The, have you heard about the, uh, uh, the brain Neuralink project? Neuralink project, yes. Yeah. So, that, the, that like, I, I would say, like, in 30 to 40 years' time, there will be a chip inserted into you, so you don't need any, uh, like, uh, external device to consume content like that chip can directly render those images in, inside your head. It might sound crazy, but uh, think about it. Like, uh, how would you like, uh, like go back to 1960 and try to explain about the mobile phone back then? How would they perceive that? Correct. So what you're saying may be a little difficult to fathom and believe now, but it is the future and the future is coming sooner than later. Yeah, I could be wrong, but that's where the world is going. Well, certainly looking at the trends we've seen, uh, Samir, I don't think you're anywhere even near being wrong in this uh, <laughs> prediction. On a final note, now you've set up successfully a new firm in the US to provide these metaverse solutions as a Sri Lankan, going to the US market, setting up a company there. Tell us about that experience and what 
how excited things were and also most importantly the challenges you faced uh, that was like uh, so in order to start a company in the us like you don't have to go to us you can do it from here in sri lanka that's the ease of doing business there so like which we don't necessarily have in sri lanka and naturally in sri lanka so like uh, even even if you want to open up a bank account it's pretty straightforward you can do it in like one month like even like you don't any one of the, any any of the directors does not have to be uh, us citizens that's possible but if it's a if there's a us citizen that's the process is easier right. but there's no way like uh, stopping like anyone from registering a us company so what were the challenges you faced uh the challenges were <clears throat> i would say uh, <clears throat> like uh, without a social security number <clears throat> uh, registering getting the uh, the tin number that means like uh, like taxation related uh, no, no. eian that means like the employer <clears throat> identification number in the us okay. so that's process is a little bit uh, difficult to get uh, without a social security number there understood samira so, on a final note would like to request you to take some time and explain to us especially to the as a as a word of advice to mm. young students who are in the tech sector what areas of uh, this augmented reality virtual reality and metaverse should they be looking at let's say if they are getting into their own ventures what are the areas to consider and what is your advice to them i would say uh, if you are a student definitely take a look into the nft space nft space is booming if you are a content, non fungible token yeah, non -fungible basically token. you create yeah. something digital exactly, exactly. and have it available on a yeah. blockchain uh, to own yeah i have seen so like some really good uh, like uh, sri lankan nft projects making the way into the global space uh, really good like all, all completely done in sri lanka uh, like uh, like uh, like all done by sri lankans inside sri lanka and like let's say if you like uh, the easy the, the beauty is if you uh like can you can get paid in cryptocurrencies so that's the beauty of it but that. how easy is it when the cryptocurrency you get paid in cryptocurrencies converting that into uh local money that's uh, that's pretty easy like uh, like if you earn in cryptocurrencies you can definitely do like the binance peer to peer to convert uh, it to sri lankan currency so there are there are different there are, there are so many ways that you can yeah. out there okay yeah. all right and the the threats that might be there mm -hmm. in these virtual worlds i mean like just, just as much you get the benefit of being able to be next to someone talk to that person and it's easy in that way mm -hmm. but what about the threats what about hackers getting access to our avatars and our profiles what about uh, various um, criminals using it for their own discussions i even saw somewhere that terrorists are now using these virtual worlds to have their own discussions because it's very difficult for governments to track mm. it's easier to tap a phone or a yeah, mobile yeah. rather than tapping into um, a metaverse uh, universe there do you see the the dark side taking over faster than the benefits yeah i would say like that's a that's a really good discussion that uh, uh, like uh, so we, uh, the hum humanity is going through this uh, rabbit hole of the metaverse we are not sure where that thing that will lead us to in the in the end yeah but the thing is like the technology is like uh, like the evolving uh, like uh, either the we have to know the way like the best way to use the technology that means like uh, when it when the when the internet comes like uh, like earlier like people said like uh, like people get addicted to the internet but if you take today so many people like if you take today like some people spend like 8 to 10 hours inside the internet so you can maybe more yeah maybe more like even even you do your job you are still on the internet Correct. but Absolutely. like 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 in 1990s like when the internet came like you have, might have heard the news like people yeah. get addicted to the internet Correct. so Correct. like Correct. now 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 you might see say that like people get addicted to the metaverse but like, when the usage maturity rises yeah, when the when the maturity it'll rises balance out yeah exactly interesting thoughts but there. definitely there will be like uh, like the scams and there will be the like the all the criminal like the activities will be on the metaverse uh, but uh, yeah that's that's how the like the people like when when a new technology comes like the like some people like use it for good uh, some will embrace yeah, the exactly. evil side samir nilpul thank you so much for joining us today sharing your thoughts on the metaverse and the different technologies of virtual reality and of augmented reality it's great to see young sri lankan tech entrepreneurs being in the forefront of these new trends not being laggards but rather embracing the waves of uh, change in technology coming up with companies and even 
providing solutions to the outside world. These are the type of encouraging uh, tech entrepreneur stories that we like to hear and share with uh, Sri Lanka. Thank you so much for joining us and wish you all the best. Okay, thank you very much. There you have it, the opportunities of the metaverse, the role that virtual reality, augmented reality will be playing. This is going to come to your business sooner than later. The faster you adopt it, the better advantage you will have. I'm Tarindu Amara Sekara, and I will see you once again next week with a quick reality check of the world of business out there. Have a profitable week ahead.